Next on the list is Dominique. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> nasty. She's a nasty person. Everybody go. Everybody go. What is going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix here, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work. What's a God? And I am happy to announce I am finally on Cameo. Listen, y'all aggravated those people. They sent me the invite and I have happily accepted. So you bitches can now book the nerd for some birthday shout outs, words of encouragement, anniversary, Christmas, Halloween, Hanukkah, Easter, Chinese New Year, <laughs> all the things, all the things. I cannot wait to greet you guys. What is going on, y'all? Our video is about to begin in a couple of seconds. Before it does, jump over to the live chat that's happening right now where you can talk to me and some of our other friends all around the world about the things we love to talk about. I want to see you in there. Hurry up right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so bad at technology. <laughs> how are you, Whitney? Great, how are you? I am doing amazing. I did not know you were just going to come in. <laughs> I didn't either. So it's a surprise for all of us. <laughs> oh my God, yes. We are all here now together, Whitney. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you electronically, but we're still meeting each other. Ounce for sure. <laughs> how are you feeling today? You look beautiful. Thank you. Um, I'm good. I'm about to go into work and I have a sick baby. So um, other than that, we're fine. Oh, no. We're sending healing energy to your baby. Kids are so resilient, you know. Good, good. Like, it's a lot of not sleeping for me is what's happening. <laughs> and, where, and where are you in the world? Uh, I'm in Florida, Panama City Beach, Florida. So I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Oh my god! So I'm I'm from the other side. I'm from outside of Jacksonville originally. Mm -hmm. Florida girls. <laughs> I've been to Panama one time in college during spring break. It was my okay. sophomore year. Yeah, spring break is crazy. Crazy. I got into a fight. With who? It was this guy. He was drunk and he called me a mean name, and me in that moment probably off liquid, liquid courage, I just kind of like like hopped on his back. A cop was there and everything. I didn't get arrested, but yeah, I got into a fight. <laughs> well, I'm mm -hmm. any. <laughs> um, spring break is nuts here for sure, but it's the beaches are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I never, I mean, it's one of the top 15 most beautiful beaches in the world. And I always thought, I agree. Like, eh, is it? And then I came here and was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they are beautiful. Yeah, when there's not a bunch of drunk, redneck college kids hanging around. <laughs> Which is often. <laughs> yes, yes. So listen, first of all, like I was saying before you came in, we are so grateful that you have decided to do this with me. I know the people watching were shocked. I was shocked. Like, I emailed you just the fact that you were... Um, in agrees to do this. Tell us, why did you want to do this? Why did you agree to do this with me? Oh, I just like your energy, honestly. When you reached out, I mean, I don't do many of these anymore. It's just like, mm -hmm. I, it's not fun for me most of the time. Um, but then I watched your interview with Yoana House or one of them and was like, ooh, you, you're fun. I want to be friends with you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I just like good energy. You know, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think it's so freaking cool, for me at least, no matter what I do in life, doing these will always be like a badge of talk my badass shit because <laughs> I was a fan of this show and never in a million years would I ever think I would be able to talk to these people so freely about the show that I love. So like, it's like, I'm fanning out, you know? So I feel yeah. like I'm at the point
disappointing. Like whenever people meet me, it's I'm just very normal. And I feel mm -hmm. like be like a diva, you know, but I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's up? You want me to call your mom or like sign it on? <laughs> Boring. <laughs> right, right. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. So without further ado, of course, we are here to talk about cycle 10 of America's Next Top Model, you being the winner of that cycle. And we're going to unpack some of the things of the things that happened during this time. And we're all going to walk away smiling, OK? <laughs> That's what I know. We're all going to walk away smiling. Yeah, I'm smiling. I cast the check, you know? <laughs> so one of the questions, you know, I'm just, I feel like I can hop in and out of questions with you. So since you said that, a lot of people wanted to know, did you get all of your prizes from winning the cycle? So sorry to be so blunt on my first question, but we kind of, we were there, so. No, because I've heard with other girls that they did have issues with it. No, I got everything. I, honestly, I think that I got the best prize package. And I don't I don't think it was like me. I think it's just the cycle. It was cycle 10. Um, it was a big year. It was like a super popular show then. Because mm -hmm. we had the, um, I had a billboard in Times Square, the cover and spread in Seventeen Magazine, $100,000 cover girl contract. I did 13 commercials with cover girl. Um, is that everything? Oh, contract with elite models. That was kind of the like only eh, for me because elite doesn't have a plus division. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> and no one knows anyone in the plus industry. So that was kind of a uh, difficult to figure out. But yeah, I got everything. So it, it was a good, good season to win for sure. Shout out to those checks clearing. <laughs> you just mentioned elite. This was another hot question down there. Everyone wants to know, how was your time at Elite? Considering from other winners, we've spoken to McKee from 11, Tiona, Tiana, excuse me. Ooh, please don't crucify me. Tiana from 12. And they said, like, their time at Elite was kind of iffy, wishy-washy. How was your time there at the agency? Um, I honestly, I loved my agent. Um, okay. You know, uh, the jobs that I did book, which were not a lot because they didn't really have those like everyday castings. They just didn't have those connections. But the ones I did book were, you know, really big money jobs. So that was, you know, a plus. Um, and then I actually, I moved to Wilhelmina after my year contract was up with Elite just because it made sense. <laughs> you know, Wilhelmina mm -hmm. is a plus division. Um, and I had a very bad relationship with Wilhelmina. I hated Wilhelmina so um yeah you know I don't know if it was just because you know I was a plus model at Elite and they're like we don't really know what to do with you but like you're pretty <laughs> okay mm -hmm. um whereas Elite was like oh my god like your hair is that color today like it just <laughs> it's a lot of negativity gotcha gotcha well thank you for being so honest so far at, at the top I appreciate that I appreciate that <laughs> maybe too honest <laughs> no it's okay it's okay we all we accept it all over here um, so to officially start it off, tell us, why did you audition for Top Model? This is the 10th season. No plus size girl has ever won. There's some who've come along who have been contenders, but they never get to the top spot. How did you feel about auditioning for Cycle 10? So it's kind of funny because I, I didn't really audition. I, um, I was at an airport uh, in LA on spring break and somebody came up to me at the airport and um back then i was really afraid of flying so like i always had to have chocolate with me when i was flying so i was picking out a candy bar um because like if a plane is crashing i'm gonna eat my candy bar <laughs> <laughs> and this girl walks up to me and she's like hey i work for america's next top model do you have any interest in being on the show and i was like well not really i'm in college i didn't really watch the show um and she said well you know you'd be considered a plus size model and I was like, oh, because <laughs> I was mm -hmm. the same. Um, and I had done some modeling when I was like in high school, like modeling, mm -hmm. local modeling. Um, and I'd never been able to get skinny enough to be like a real model. Um, and I got really, really, you know, low in weight. Uh, and that's when I just like, forget modeling. I'm not going to do this. It's not healthy. I want to eat pizza with my friends. So when said you'd be a plus model I was like I'm sorry wait that's an that's an option mm -hmm. um, but then I felt like I kind of had a story to tell because like how messed up is it, it that you're a size six and five foot ten and mm -hmm. you're you know what does that say to the average American woman who's you know at least a size 14 right 
So I felt compelled, like, okay, well, I could do this. And then my family was like, you could always go back to college, you know, um, modeling will not always be there. So I thought, all right, I'll try, you know, and I went to Orlando for the audition and, you know, kind of the rest is history. So. so like when you auditioned, did you walk in with the attitude of winning, like you could actually win the whole thing? Or was this just for you, like, just trying to take a stance and just seeing how far it went? Sorry, I have to plug my phone in because I didn't realize this was going to be on. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Do what you got to do. Getting my charger. Um, so when I went to the audition, I think it's one of those, like, fake it until you make it sort of things. Oh, okay. All right, if my phone dies at some point, I apologize. I'll figure it out. Um, okay. So <laughs> we're here. No, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it was fake as you missed it. I definitely was pretending like I had more together than I actually did. You know, like you walk in and you're like, I'm super confident, but you know, everyone has self-esteem issues and you know, you say I'm gonna win, I'm doing this for, you know, the greater good and all of that. And at the time I believed it, but looking back, it's like, you know, I was such a child that I actually have any idea what I was talking about or was I just, you know, saying what I thought, um, you know, would, would, I guess, expedite the process. What, no, that, no, that makes perfect sense. What are some of those things that you, that you kind of dissect now that you said back then? Oh my God. <laughs> like, I can't even watch the show because it, <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Um, and of course, you know, the main points are true today, you know, mm -hmm. as far as like, um, you know, loving yourself and how messed up the modeling industry is. And I've spoken for, you know, 10 years at various universities all over the world about healthy body image. And I'm a spokesperson for the National Eating Disorders Association. Um, so that obviously reigns true. But on the show, it's just so dramatic. Um, it's just so dramatic. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's one point where I'm, I watch, you know, the show, I don't know, every like three years. And I look into the camera and I go, like, seriously, the competition, it's like so fierce right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Who are uh -huh. you? So dumb. But uh -huh. that's so you're surrounded by all that dramatic energy. And so you just feel like you're smizing and you're fierce and, you know, whatever all the tyrannisms are. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you audition, you get in. How was it actually getting there? On set, seeing the producers, seeing some of the other contestants, being immersed in the energy of a production, how was that? Oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. People ask, you know, would you ever do it again? And, um, you know, I said, well, winning was good, but everything else was, like, the worst experience of my life. It was so bad. What were some of those things? I mean, they locked you away. We we had a two-bedroom apartment, apartment in Manhattan, right? So mm -hmm. two bedrooms, 13 girls two bathrooms. Um, every girl that was a smoker had to quit smoking the day that they moved in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the energy just like right off the bat is not great. Um, and then like, there's no music, no books, um, mm -hmm. no TV, no magazines. Uh, and they don't tell you when you're going to leave the apartment again. So like you might be in there for three days and no one says anything to you. And if you're shopping for groceries, um, one, you're paying with your own money, which, you know, is whatever. Um, but the cameramen are the ones who get the groceries for you. So if I make a list, like, oh, I really want to bake a cake. You know, I think it'll make me feel better. And I put everything on that list. And they go to the store and buy everything except flour. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with that? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, so it's just little things like that that you're, like, mm -hmm. kind of, like, tick, 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 tick. Um just things you can't control. I will say though, like the camera guys and producers were all super nice, but I also think that's part of kind of the ploy because you do these one-on-one -on -one interviews with them and they're like, oh my God, like, did you see the way that um, Anya looked at you during your runway show? Like, how did that make you feel? And you feel like you're talking to your friend, like uh -huh. you feel, you know? <laughs> they're mm -hmm. not your friend. <laughs> they want you to say some messed up stuff. Mm -hmm. There's that. Okay. How was the scene tired for the first time? Oh my God. Amazing. She's, her energy is just incredible. Even mm -hmm. now, like I've co-hosted her talk show with her. Um, 
on more than one occasion. And every time I see her, I'm like, oh my God, it's Taka. <laughs> like, it's mm -hmm. so, so exciting. And uh, it's funny on her talk show because she's like, she comes from a separate part of the stage and like, you didn't really see her unless I was out there on stage, you know, co-hosting. Mm -hmm. She's like, hey girl, how are you? And come give me a hug. And I'm like, oh my God, she just touched me. <laughs> <laughs> you still fan it but, out. Uh, like, oh, they're friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Call me. <laughs> right. Call me, girl. Right. Okay. So you were, so overall, you were excited the first time you saw her because her energy was so infectious. Oh, yeah. And has always been since then. Got you. Okay. Well, we're going to move into a favorite part everyone loves to indulge in. In these things called ATM Roll Call. Now, this is where I named everyone who was cast on a cycle the contestants, the on-screen talent, and the judges, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. This is your gut, honest oh God. response. <laughs> okay, it's been a minute since I've watched the show. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. But are you ready still? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. The first name, may she rest in peace, is Miss Kimberly. Ooh, uh, yeah, I don't... Not appropriate. I would just say drugs. Just, <laughs> I don't want to be tacky, but yeah, she had a history. At, at the time she was on the show? She had been dating a guy who was a drug dealer. Um, yeah, she just kind of had a, a rough past, I'll say. Did not expect her. I didn't expect her to leave. I didn't expect any of that from her. But um, yeah, when I heard the news about that, Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of initially, immediately understood, you know, what was going on. Gotcha. All right. Oh, beautiful. Um, how was it standing in that panel, watching her step forward and quit and her give the reasons of why she wanted to leave? Um, honestly, I, I couldn't even remember. Panels are so scary. Um, really? Next, before every panel, and I still thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> and you stand there, you, you know, people think you're there for five minutes. You're there for, like, six hours. Standing. I can imagine. Yeah, it's an all-day thing, you know, waiting for people to cut you off the show. So, yeah, it's just unbelievable <laughs> stress. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of block it all out. And then at the end, I'm like, oh, am I still here? Great. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Do you, do you remember the first photo shoot you guys did? It was the homeless photo shoot. Oh, yeah. You guys were out there. You still had your dark brown hair. How was that? Cold. That was really cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was cold. And the clothes, like, I don't look good in hats. I don't know. I wasn't happy with my outfit. Um, and it was super dark there, too. So I'm surprised that the photos came out as well as they did. Oh, wow. But that was also before I really understood lighting, you know? Mm -hmm. I was a kid, so, yeah. But that hairstyle, no, none of that was really me. <laughs> Did you like the photo that came out, your best photo, the one you saw? Uh, I think my cheekbones look good, so there's that. Mm -hmm. That's but fair, okay. The layers, it's like you're really having to work through a lot of that. Um, but as far as it being on TV, I think it was a really good message. Do mm -hmm. I think it's a realistic photo shoot that I would ever have to do? No. Probably not, no. End of the show, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that first episode, Kim, she leaves, but Tyra says, a girl is still getting the chopping tonight. And the next girl out was Atalia. Oh. Beautiful. She was like Barbie. Mm -hmm. She was so beautiful. I mean, in person, too. I, I was definitely surprised that she got chopped. But, you know, Tyra hates that, like, um, beauty queen sort of thing. And I think that's, she was very, like, hi, I'm Safia, and I'm pretty, and that, you know. Gotcha. I'm sure there was more to her than that, but, you know, I guess we won't ever know. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess next, we or, you know. <laughs> the next person on the list is Allison. Oh, I really liked Allison. She looks like such a, am I allowed to say, am I allowed to swear? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, curse. Yeah, you can say whatever you want to say. She looked like such a bitch. And she is a bitch, but, like, so am I. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, there's good and bad, you know what I mean? And she uh -huh. was so sassy and raw. Um, and, you know, what they showed on the show, obviously, was not great. Um, and she looked really bad. But when she 
the outside of that, like the rest of everything she did, she was so funny. Um, really just kind of like made light of so many situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. How was that photo shoot for you that week? This is when you guys were on top of the boat in New York City on the river. And you had that like that um, tight skirt on, I think, where you kind of laying yeah. down. They gave you a hard time, I remember. Yeah, they gave me a hard time because the outfit she was like, you should be wearing lingerie and not a corset and skirt and shirt, which I agree. Um, but it was also freezing cold, so I'm not mad about it. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, you're not allowed to pick your costume or your outfit, I guess, for the show. So it's mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, it is what it is. And obviously, Elle McPherson was there, which was amazing. And all the mm -hmm. girls were so incredible. Um, and I, I didn't even think at the time, like, oh, I'm not wearing, you know, lingerie. Just didn't really, because for every photo shoot, the plus size girl gets kind of a different outfit. Mm -hmm. really. <laughs> and I think that's kind of part of the show. They want you to, they want to like poke you um, so that you say something. That's what happened with uh, Takara. You know, she finally got fed up and snapped and then she got cut. And so I made it a point when I went on the show, like, I'm not going to say anything. Whatever. Gotcha. And they did lots of things that, you know, never aired because I just didn't make it into a big deal. Mm hmm Do you want to share with us what some of those things were that they did? Those micro, <laughs> those are microaggressions, right? Microaggressions. Uh, yeah, like, so when we were in Rome and we had the Gladiator uh, mm -hmm. challenge, um, they they didn't have a skirt that was my size, like not even close to my size. And they had to safety pin it. And the girl who was doing it kept like stabbing me with the safety pins. I was like, so and like, mm, you know my size, <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. I've been here for a minute. <laughs> so it's not like they don't know exactly what your measurements are when you go there. So it's like, this is intentional, you know? Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I think it's I think it's very genius that you identified that that could possibly be something that you encountered and that you had already decided within yourself to not let it affect you um, during your time on the show. That's a great that's a great boundary. It's a good thing about pen. You get to learn from other people's mistakes. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So overall, the the L McPherson photo shoot for you wasn't wasn't a, a complete disaster. No, no. It, you know, we got, it was a nice view. We were on the water. Mm -hmm. I love the water. got to see the bridge. You know, it's just, it's, it's a full experience. And we also, we were lucky. We had such a great hair and makeup crew on the show. Mm -hmm. For what happened, we got to kind of, you know, talk to them and work it out with them. And um, they would let us vent. You know, that was really oh. nice. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Next on the list is Amos. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> <About her. laughs> um gosh goofy she's goofy she's definitely goofy mm -hmm. she's just like um is very attention seeking and one of those kind of like <sighs> like you can tell she's insecure and so she's trying to go out of her way to sort of make make fun of herself be self-deprecating mm. Um, but it becomes like it's it's overwhelming to be around someone like that twenty four seven. Mm -hmm. America's next top model. We know you're pretty. Like, come on, mm -hmm. let's just <laughs> be a person and not a character all the time. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how was that week's photo shoot for you? This was the meat photo shoot. You guys had slabs of protein on your bodies. Yeah, that to make it fashion. It smelled so bad. <laughs> I bet. Ew. So bad. And what's funny is that my um, hairstylist, like, you know, a year later ended up being, like, you know, on the same block, basically, in the meatpacking district. Um, and it's funny because now I'm vegan, so I don't know if that, like, played a role. <laughs> <laughs> right. Some PTSD. Um, yeah, I mean, it was gross, you know, like you have your little beige thong on and whatever, and you have raw meat on top of you and... Yeah. Ah! But that's the show. That's, you know, it wouldn't be interesting <laughs> if mm -hmm. it was a normal everyday photo shoot. How were you able to power through it? What were you telling yourself? Do you remember? Like, how were you coaching yourself through that moment? 
<sighs> Honestly, that I don't think that was my best photo shoot. So I'm not 100% sure. It wasn't at the time, it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to be sick. It's so gross. There's meat. Because um, a lot of the girls were were very like, ah, and like, mm -hmm. it's, it's just meat. You know, you eat it, it's fine. It's not something I want on me, but it's, you know, it could be worse. It could be spiders. You know, that it is could be spiders. It could be snakes. Oh, yeah. I would not have won. It could be a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meat. I mean, it's dead. So that's that's a plus, mm. I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> next on the list is Marvita. Oh, badass! I love Marvita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was, and we were really close on the show. They don't show that. Um, you know, they're it's not, it's not good at showing who was actually friends with who because it's all you know cut up so much. But mm -hmm. Marvita and I were really close. And for real, if my phone dies, you're going to give me, like, uh, 60 seconds to go find a charger. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine, girl. We're having fun. We're all, okay. It's all good. It's all good. How did you feel about her treatment on the show? Like, the trajectory she went on? She came in very strong, and then they started implementing, or at least from the viewer's perspective, these, like, um, insecure moments she was maybe having with herself that was affecting her performance. You being there, what was your take on it? Well, that's what they do on the show. I mean, they try to break you down. So, Marvita... Mm. And also, I will say, like, that hardness, definitely um, some of that was just a facade. You know, like, people act tough because they have to. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that they broke her down a bit. And that's, yeah, that's their goal with everybody, really. Um, and they wanted that soft side. But I think, you know, the truth is, in the modeling industry, you don't have to be every single side. You know, mm -hmm. you have someone like Marvita you see that comp card, you're like, oh, hell yeah, that's an athletic campaign. You're not like, mm -hmm. make her a Clinique girl, you know, like, no. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. We all have our own looks, and they're very specific. So in real life, I don't think that would have happened. But, you know, that's not interesting TV. Gotcha. Gotcha. How was the paint photo shoot for you? Very <laughs> abstract art. Um, I, I was really, really excited about it. Um, I hated my outfit and my hair, um, but that's kind of, you know, I was 19 when I went on the show, so you don't understand, or at least I didn't when I was so young, that just because it doesn't look good off camera, it doesn't mean it won't look good on camera. And Got you. I had felt a little more confident. I could have done a better job, but it, it's such a cool, sh I would love to do that with another photographer. Um, because just the concept is so awesome. There's so much you can do. But you yeah, know. it is a really cool concept. Yeah. Cool. Do you, do you want to go get your charger? Everyone's saying, let her go get a charger, Oliver. Yeah, can I like pause this or something? Yes, you can. Okay. Y'all, I'm old. <laughs> we were sailing along on my bed. We can hear the whistle sea. Are you guys enjoying this chat? Put up some, um, I don't know, what kind of emoji? Put some fire emojis. If you are enjoying this chat, let me see the flames rise to the roofs of the chat room, honey. Let me see them rise. <laughs> yes, Moonlight Bay. What y'all want me to sing? What y'all want me to sing? Can y'all twerk to this song? <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> The comments are coming in too late. Y'all are so funny. Y'all are so funny. If you want it, the things that make me let the guy. She's back. I'm back. Yes, thank you. You good, y'all, Sam? Mm. Okay, perfect. Um, The next person on the list is... Uh-oh. Sorry. Amy! Oh, sweet. She was so sweet. 
that's Thank like <laughs> I don't have a lot to say about Amy. She was she was so wholesome and mm -hmm. um uh just kind of untouched, you know, she hadn't really been out pure. Yeah. <laughs> innocent, innocent. Mm -hmm. How was the music genre photo shoot for you? Oh, um, fun. Yeah, that was really fun. Um, the photographer, uh, Russell, can't remember his last name. Um, Don't want to tell us in the chat. They're really good at this. Yeah, Hot Australian, Russell, the Sports Illustrated. Anyways, uh, <laughs> he was so great. And he mm -hmm. seemed to really love working with me. And when your photographer likes you, <laughs> Mm -hmm. like, as a human being and that makes a huge difference whereas you know a lot of them are standoffish sure. he was like yes like this looks incredible go with it it's like okay <laughs> um and I, you know i got to be in an empty pool and it was just mm -hmm. fun you know my sister was very 90s grunge um mm -hmm. the flannel and all of that so it was a really good time okay next on the list is claire that's it russell james Good job. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Russell James is his name. <laughs> you, are you there? You there? Yes, yeah. Okay, got you. I'm uh, Sorry. So <laughs> oh, yeah, girl. Yeah, the that's me, Russell James. Yeah, not me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Claire? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Hawaii. That's <laughs> Claire's... Um, she's a character I mean I, I love Claire you know after the show I've spent some time with her you know we both lived mm -hmm. in New York she had Argentine Dogos which my sister had it's like a rare, really random breed of dog um, on the show she was definitely you know I want to say she was the oldest of the the models so she was um, she had lived a lot more than we had she had a lot of experience that we didn't have mm -hmm. and I, vibed as well um just because she you know we just weren't on the same playing field mm -hmm. so i believe it was when i was talking to her i believe so yeah it had to be her because i haven't spoken to many girls since i could tim she said that she stood up to production regarding something guys i can't remember for it those of you who watched the, it dude right she got her what now the where's the bruta shoot that we did the water shoot yes she got hurt. She like hurt her neck and she told uh -huh. the crew or production and they were like, you know, whatever. And she was like, no, I really hurt my neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, that's why she thinks she got cut. <laughs> yeah, my, my brain is drawing a blank right now. I can't remember it exact. So I don't want to quote her specifically, but I do remember her saying that she had some like blatant confrontation with production. It, the food, they said the food. Was it the food guys? Uh, I can't remember. But <laughs> she did have some type of confrontation with them. And, and you remember it as that photo shoot when they didn't give her oh, any. Like she got in a fight with food guys? <laughs> I don't know. I, this is what I know. <clears throat> when we did the shoot um, with the water thing, um, she decided to do it like the, the actors did. And she slammed herself down on the water. And she hurt her neck pretty badly mm -hmm. and, she them that. and they were like yeah okay and she was like no I really heard it like this is a liability sort of thing and she got cut that week and so mm -hmm. I'm sure, I mean whether it had anything to do with that or not I don't know but it was definitely like <laughs> mm, you know how was, convenient what how convenient yeah it's kind of one of those Everyone's screaming at me. They said she stood up for phone calls. Phone calls. Oh. Oh, I don't I wouldn't know anything about that. Um I mean I <laughs> I was just like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> like, I'll do whatever. Um, like I said, she was older in the group, so she probably understood mm -hmm. like her rights more mm -hmm. um than we did. And phone calls were a joke i mean it was it was like okay so you have 45 minutes there's 13 of you um figure it out <laughs> yeah yikes 
you get 2.1 seconds, you know, like it just, it was so stupid. And the girls are fighting, like, I'm not gonna have any time left. You, you took too long. And it just was, it felt very personal, even though like, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to call anybody without their permission anyways. So you're allowed a phone call like once every week and a half mm -hmm. to like one person. So it was, uh, it was rough. And she's got a family, you no know, husband, mm -hmm. kids. So I can't imagine um, how difficult that would be for her, you know, for me. Yeah my parents, my brother and sister. Hearing you say that, it makes me want to ask you, were there any, let me ask you this, how do you, how do you feel about the treatment the producers gave you while filming the show? Like, how do you feel like they conducted you guys as contestants, as adults, as women? How, what are your thoughts and feelings on that? Um, I mean, they, they treat you like cattle, basically. You're just a prop to them. Um, and they, you know, they prod you and poke you and try to get you to react. That's, you know, you're not a person for sure. Got you. Okay. Um, next on the list is Stacey Ann. <laughs> we spoke to Stacey Ann. I just remember, <laughs> yeah, Stacey. Uh, my Jamaican queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Stacey Ann. We actually, we met, I think when I, um, I was living in London, she was in town for something and we, got a bite together she's so sweet and on the show um like the only interaction that they show with me and her is when she calls me fat <laughs> and i just it you know that was a bad time for her but mostly we were we were really good friends on the show so mm -hmm. super sweet i have no bad blood with her at all um, I got to go back a little bit because I forgot to ask you, how, what are your thoughts on, I can't pronounce it the right way, it's the water photo shoot with the nice colors. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Thank you. Nature, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, was that, how was that for you? Um, <laughs> it was weird. It was weird because it's, you have no idea what you look like. You're basically laying on saran wrap with a puddle. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, tilt your face this way. I mean, there's, like, no lighting. Everything is just, <laughs> you're just in the dark. You're in the dark. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fact that I got anything at all out of that shoot is, uh, is great. But you just have, yeah, you have no idea what's going on. You're just laying there, you know, with your eyes closed in water, like, mm -hmm. flailing around. Like, I hope mm -hmm. I got it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you feel like they selected your actual best photo? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, but I mean, the show wouldn't be good if we all had beautiful photos every week. <laughs> true, true. It's the root for someone, you know, mm -hmm. but it builds up. I mean, I was on the chopping block, I think more than any other contestant in the history of Top Model. I think, I, I think you're tied with someone else. I think, yeah. I, think he's, I think you, J. Cole, and Brie from Cycle 5 are all tied for five times in the bottom. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> but it builds that, like, oh, no, I hope she doesn't get cut side of people. Mm -hmm. um, or I hope that bitch goes home. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there's a little of both. But um, it makes your feelings for a contestant stronger when you see them, like, getting ready to be cut. Like, oh, no, they didn't mm -hmm. deserve it. So, you know, it's kind of a smart move. Whereas if someone's good every single week and you know they're going to win, why watch it? You already know. Okay, so, so let me ask you this then. Do you think that some of the times you were placed in the bottom, you deserved it? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Each and every time. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> okay. But sometimes, yeah, sure. I'm sure, you know, once or twice I deserved it. Uh, five mm -hmm. times? No, no way. Okay, and so I'm kind of jumping ahead when I ask this, but I had to ask that question then to ask this. So do you think, it, by any means, the way you were uh, produced on the show, you going in the bottom, your photo selected. Do you feel like that was all a part of a plan for you to be the winner to create this, uh, to create these stakes and this antici anticipation and all that? Well, I don't think that, I honestly, I don't think that they know who the winner is when the show starts. I really don't. Okay. But yeah, I think every week, you know, they, they have an idea. But here's the thing, like what you said about the photos. We all know. You, you got some photos of girls. They're like, eh. You know that's not her best photo. You know mm. that. <laughs> but you put it up there. And so I feel like <laughs> the producers and Tyra see the talent. 
and they don't necessarily share that with everybody else. You know what I mean? Okay. Like they know who the better models are, but they don't show the audience necessarily. So I think in their head, they're like, okay, this girl's good. This girl's going to get up there. But, you know, they do have to build anticipation. And it's, yeah, it's not interesting if, like I said, if photos are good every week. No, right. Yeah. I love, I love, I'm loving your perspective on it. I'm derailing from um, roll call because we've gotten deep into this conversation and it's going to be my last question on it. We're going to get back into it. So a lot of people have this big theory on cycle 10 regarding you being the winner that like you were a pre-select to win. They always knew they wanted you to win. What are your thoughts on hearing this? <laughs> if it, if it was anybody else in any other cycle and the plus size winner won, like it, they would have said the same thing because okay. for one out of 12 or 11 other girls who are all size zero. <laughs> so in order for a plus size model to compete against these girls who are in a completely different bracket of modeling, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like in real life, that doesn't happen. I don't go to castings with size two models, you know, um, it's just not, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying this video, but we need to take a little break to get a word from our sponsors. Hey there, little black boy. Are you trying to figure out how to get your bag without being one of the hustlers and movers on TV, but you don't know how? Come learn business from me, a degreed CEO. Follow me at What You Know Quan, and follow my podcast at Straight Facts TV, where you can learn how to get your money right and how to do business. Looking forward to seeing you soon. So on the show, to put you up against these girls, you know, I think Takara had a really good shot of winning. I think she could have won if she had been able to, you know, calm herself and keep herself together. And mm -hmm. that being said, like, it's not like I kept myself together. I tried to on camera. Like, I cried mm -hmm. for every single night. Like, it was very, very difficult. Um, but I think that I think they were looking for someone. I do think they wanted a plus size winner to win because they had had so many girls on the show at that point and none of them had gotten close enough. I don't think that they thought I was going to win. I think if anything, they thought I'd be like top three, maybe top two. Um, mm -hmm. And then we had a really dramatic uh, finale with Anya and I. And I honestly think that my finale, like, interview with the judges is why I was picked and not Anya. Okay. And so when all that is said and done, you feel like you won fair and square. I do. Bam. Bam. There it is. Y'all heard it from her. <laughs> Y'all heard it from her. There's no theory. There's no pre-select. You feel like you went in there, cycle 10, and you did what needed to be done, and you whipped all their asses, and you won fair and square. Bam. Yeah, in in so many words. <laughs> no, I said it for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Next on the ATM roll call list is Lauren. Oh, uh, Lurch. Yeah. I love <laughs> right. Well, that she would call herself that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was so cool um, and such a nerd at the same time. And we—that's another one. We were really good friends. We slept in that one bed uh, <laughs> for seven girls. Uh, and we slept next to each other uh, mm -hmm. pretty much every night until we went to Italy. And then we kind of had a, a falling out. But, um, yeah, I really liked Lauren. She was, she was a cool chick. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she, uh, I, I didn't think that she had any chance of winning just because she, <laughs> well, she can't walk. You know, mm -hmm. she, she's just very awkward. And I understand that because as a tall person, you know, in middle school and high school, like I had to teach myself how to like stand up straight because you want to, you know, cave your shoulders over and be the same height as the other girls. And um, I totally get that. But, you know, if you want to be a model, you have to walk. And she just couldn't seem to get that down. Yeah. But her bone structure is amazing. How was the photo, not the photo shoot, the commercial shoot you guys did? When you guys like walking in that restaurant, you guys have the lipstick, you had to, you guys had to do those commercials. Girl, I don't speak Italian. <laughs> mm -mm. I, like 
puro la licenza de la mia labra. I feel like that's what exactly what I said. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. have any idea what that means. <laughs> How much time does y'all actually get to sit with the sit with the script? Hair and makeup. We just had hair and makeup to learn the script. And they're like, oh, memorize it, memorize it. I'm like, I can memorize it. I studied Latin. Okay, so like I can read it and know what the words mean to some extent, but I don't speak Italian. And so mm -hmm. I cannot speak Italian. <laughs> like I can, if you have a test, you want me to write it down for you? <laughs> but like mm -hmm. as far as <laughs> saying it, <laughs> no. no. But I mean, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the fun of it, right? <laughs> Let's get these girls an Italian script and see what uh -huh. happens. <laughs> Great idea. Yes, and of Great. course, everyone down in chat right now is commenting the most iconic line we did get out of that moment, which was Dominique's Brasilia. Yeah. Oh my God. How was that standing in panel watching that? Did you bust out laughing? Um, I don't remember. I feel like I said, I was just like blacked like out every panel. Like, please don't let me pass out. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, none of us did well though. None of us were like, oh, well, her, her shoot was bad. Like, we were all bad, mm -hmm. especially me. I was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh huh. I want to take another segue because <laughs> I keep because I keep hearing you say like during like the competition, like you had these moments, these little aside moments where you were like, you know, having emotional time with yourself. What were you feeling throughout the competition? Because from what we can see, I think most people saw you as someone who was very fierce and confident and who was like almost maniacally to some people like trying to get to the top, like trying to find her way to the top, but I'm hearing something else. What was that for you? Um, yeah, well, it's kind of like what I said, you know, with my interview process, like it's, it's a fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. So, and I was this confident, like I'm gonna get there and I'm doing this for all the women in the world. And, you know, and I do feel that way, but was I able to really, you know, live my life that way at the time. No, I wasn't, you know, the most confident person in the room for sure. But I had to, I had to be that person, you know, because mm -hmm. other people were looking up to me. Gotcha. Um, and so it's just kind of the same thing throughout the competition. Like if I, um, I just used Takara as an example. She's like my favorite plus model. Um, <laughs> But if I had a meltdown like that, I would have been gone. And I knew that. So I had to, you know, buck up. And I do think it comes across as disingenuous sometimes on the show um, because it is, you know, where I'm like, oh, yeah, everything's great. And, you know, everything's really fierce right now. Like, that's me holding back. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. me. I just want to go home um, because people are mean. And being, honestly, being the only plus size model in the house was rough. You know, I'm the only one eating. Um, lots of the girls were on, you know, fast during the show. Um, one only drank green tea for like a week and a half. So for me, like just eating like a lean cuisine pizza by myself, you know, you're surrounded by all size zeros. And in the real world, like I didn't feel like I was plus size, but then you move into a house with all size zeros and you're like, oh shit, I'm six times bigger than all the girls here. Mm. And so you immediately are like, oh my God, like I don't fit in here. I look different. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really a mind fuck. <laughs> no, I could imagine. But like, wow, it really screws with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, thank you for sharing that. Going back into roll call, the next person on the list is, guys, don't laugh at me, Cartagena. Did I say it right? Did I say it right? Katagina. Katagina. Or if you're Tyra. Katagina. Katagina. So it's almost like a dance in your mouth. That poor girl. Tyra was like, Katarjina. She's like, it's not. Oh, okay. I've got it now. Katarjina. <laughs> Oh, Tyra. You know, I, I hate to be so inappropriate, but I'm going to do it because it's my shit. Tyra, that was the most blackest way to read someone's <laughs> name. <laughs> Katarjana! Like, girl, no. Ask someone to pronounce it for you, for you girl. Katarjana. <laughs> Katarjana. <laughs> Tyra Lynn. Yeah, she spoke French fluently. Um, mm -hmm. She was so beautiful. If I could have, like, been a girl on the show, I would have been her. Like, she Ooh! was so gorgeous and so 
European, you know, like she had mm -hmm. traveled and I hadn't at the time. Um, and her cheekbones were gorgeous. Just everything about mm -hmm. her, I loved her. Um, I don't think she felt the same way about me. <laughs> but I really idolized her. Yeah. What makes you say that? Well, we didn't, uh, we weren't friends. Like, I wouldn't say we're not, okay. like, not friends, but we were not, like, we didn't have a lot of conversations. Mm hmm So. Fair. Okay, fair. <laughs> Give away, right? <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on what is one of my favorite photo shoots of all time in top model history, the couture photo shoot you guys had, when you guys had those wigs and those couture dresses, and you were in that doorway doing all this. Oh, my God. So it's kind of like the Forza Bruta shoot in that that um, hole was pitch black. It was pitch black. There was no lighting. And so you had you know, your, um, your light like here, but it was, it's not the kind of, it's not like a ring light or something that's on all the time. It's one mm -hmm. that pops, you know, when they take the picture. So I can't see the light. I can't feel the light on my face. So like, you know, cause I can feel my angles and, um, <laughs> it's just like these flash, flash, flash. And you're like, I don't know what's going on. And it's like my hair's mm -hmm. all over. Um, cause I feel like it could have been so great. And it, for me was not. I just, you know, I couldn't feel my angles. And mm -hmm. uh, and I had something in mind that I really wanted to accomplish uh, that I had seen in a fashion magazine, and I just, I couldn't pull it out. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, it's hard when you can't, you have no idea what you look like, you know? And especially back then, like, I, could I do it now? Yeah, because I've been doing this for a long time now. But then, like, no. <laughs> no. No. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like... Um... Cartagena was sent home fairly at that time? Um, no. No. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I mean, she's, I would have picked her for one of the winners for sure. Mm hmm You know. Do you think, hmm? no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, there, there was, you know, there was a handful of girls, like, you get the girls to go on the show, and you're like, you're a character piece, you're, you know, you're gonna be the angry one, you're whatever. Um, she was definitely one of the girls that I was like, she could win, for mm -hmm. sure. Do you think they sent her home because maybe she just hadn't contributed to the storyline enough, like the other girls did? Um, probably. Probably. Um, she wasn't, you know, like I said, she's really European and she was really cultured. And I just don't mm -hmm. think she was ever going to get into that, like, cattiness um, that the other girls, including me, did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. If you're not interesting, then people don't really pay attention to you. Fair enough. Next on the list is... Can I say this? She was the one girl. I was like, why are you here? Like, why are you here? I, I know why I'm here. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm a plus size model. And, like, that's not an easy market to break into. But she could have walked into any agency in New York and signed. So why the hell is she doing reality TV? That was my, like, I would love to know that. Because it made no sense to me. You felt like she could have already had like a successful career outside of the show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There was no reason for her to go on the show. Like she could literally, she could have walked into any agency in New York. They would have signed her immediately. So just made no sense to me. The world may never know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, it is so appreciated. Next on the list is Dominique. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> nasty. She's just a nasty person. I mean, like, um, <clears throat> emotionally. Like, when we were coming home from uh, Italy, her, so there was some drama, and I'm, I'm not going to quote it correctly, but, like, her ex-baby daddy's son had gotten shot. And she was like, yeah, in your face, like, celebrating it. And I was like, you're a, you're a bad person. That's not that's not something that you should do. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah. <laughs> <That's> have, <laughs> have you guys had any time since the show to like smooth things over? Um, I feel like I saw her somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. No, I guess I saw her at the 17 magazine launch. So like that wouldn't have been a good time to talk. No, not really. Um, we were just, she, you know, kind of like Claire. She was in, she was a little bit older. She had more experience. She had kids. We were just not in the same, like, 
realm, you know, outside of top model, we never would have had a conversation. Um, and then, you know, just in general, her talking in third person. And, um, and I think she was the same as the rest of us in a lot of ways. Like, there's no way she was as confident as she was pretending to be. Like, there's just no way. Mm -hmm. um, or if she is, like, good for her. <laughs> I wish we could all have that kind of confidence. But, like, talking in third person and, like, constantly, like, Dominique does this and Dominique does that. And, you know, Dominique's going to win. It's like, that's just, she was that way in the house, you know, and dealing with that 24-7. Just, like, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. <laughs> Did you consider her to be a strong contender to win the competition? No, never. No, she's not a model. I mean, her, she's just, she's not. She's not even commercial. She's not commercial. She's not fashion. And those are really the only two options for modeling. She could have been um, a singer, an actor. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I know that sounds like not attractive because she is but she's not you you know she's not the girl that you would see i don't know like on the cover of vogue like that just would never happen uh, i think she's sickening no and she's well not to mock with well, her cheekbones, her cheekbones are insane are insane but she, yeah um you know, well, okay, so her cheekbones do photograph well, but in person, I would say, like, what I remember of her when I think about her, like, right now, is no. Solid no, across the board. Okay. Like, she ever went to a casting? No. Can she photograph? Hell yeah, those cheekbones light up, but she's not, she was never going to be a model. She doesn't, just nothing, <laughs> no part of her was going to be an elite model. I'll say that. Gotcha. Fair. Okay. How was it? Um, do you know where Tyra you got shot with Tyra this week when you guys were with the man and you guys were kind of like supposed to be kind of like caught by paparazzi with the sky? Oh yeah. And Tyra was very hard on you that week. Yeah. Regarding your performance in the shoot, what do you remember about it? Um, I was nervous. I was nervous. It's I, I I've always felt this way with male shoots. Like it's just really awkward to get right next to someone. And the guy we were shooting with was like in his thirties, you know, and I like, I wasn't even 20 yet. Um, and it was just, I don't know, it's just weird. You haven't been around a man in months at that point. Just oh, yeah. it feels so awkward, like, oh, get close to him, touch him, make, you know, mm -hmm. portray that you're, you know, <laughs> in love with him. And I was like, oh my God, he smells like a man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and again, that was a dark shoot, it was like, I, you know, it was like in a tunnel at night. Uh, it was freezing cold. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely, you know, that was one of the shoots where they kept telling me like, do this, do this, do this, you're not doing this. And I couldn't understand what they wanted from me. Mm -hmm. And um, and then they weren't happy, you know, obviously. And I think in real life, like they could have, they would have shown me, um, you know, like a, a book for the day, like a lot of times they'll give you inspiration. And if I could see something like that, you know, and they'd reference La Dolce Vita, well, I hadn't seen that at the time. And I just clearly was missing what they were trying to give me. So, you know, definitely my fault for sure. But it was, um... <laughs> This is the head nerd in charge here, Oliver Twix telling you that I will be performing live in Atlanta on December 17th at the Artisan's Bar. The show begins at 9 p.m. And it won't be me just by myself. I'm bringing some friends along the way. This is my first show in a long time, so believe it's gonna be the night of your life. You hear me? Get your tickets now at www.alderTwix.com forward slash shows, or click the link in my bio or my Instagram. I hope to see you there. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> But say, sexual attention was high across the board with those girls. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, room was like, <laughs> claws out. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, even um, our hairstylists, um, yeah, they were all, like, <laughs> flirting all the time. <laughs> There's no one else to talk to, though. And he was, like, 47 with kids. Like, it was not, it was not going to happen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Get a French accent, so. <laughs> Whitney did. Oh, this is so messy, but I'm asking. 
Are you aware of anyone ever being able to get their life while they were filming? And particularly your cycle. Did anyone ever have a nice moment aside? No. Okay. No. Definitely not. Yeah, but because when you're even when you're going, thinking it. <laughs> when you're going places, mm -hmm. I, um, so you're not allowed to speak to anybody. You're not allowed to have any interaction whatsoever. And you have two managers with you, like in the car or the bus or on the sidewalk, wherever it is. Gotcha. They don't allow you to have any interaction, and that's really. I mean, you have cameras twenty four seven in your apartment. Um, you have camera men on you anytime you leave the apartment. You're on ice, mm. you know, with managers any other time. It, the only time you have literally was if you were in the bathroom by yourself. Mm -hmm. If somebody else was in the bathroom, they could film. So, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> I want to know, this is the point before top three. At this point, did you still feel confident like you had a chance of winning? Considering your track history at that point being, you know, very heavily critiqued, appearing in the bottom. Uh, Fatima is on an upward trajectory Anya has been doing like nearly a fall a flawless job the entire time. Did you walk it into the final three feel like I still have a chance to win this? Well, I'll tell you that's two <laughs> two answers there. Um, okay. One, what you see on TV is not what I saw being there in person. So I actually won more challenges than anybody else, and they didn't show that. Um, so at home, it looked like, oh, no, Whitney's going to go home. She's not doing well. I'm not winning anything. But in real life, <laughs> I was. And so on my side, I'm seeing, you know, Anya getting fussed at for her photos, Fatima nonstop um, criticism. Just, you know, she was, she was a difficult character to work with on set for the hair and makeup and everybody else. And so, you know, when you see these other sides, then you're not as worried because obviously it's it's different for me but when you are at home oh my god like i <laughs> i had the highest anxiety of my life i thought honestly this is true i thought when i was watching the finale that maybe i didn't win that maybe i left and they brought anya back out and they told her that she won just to make sure that it was top secret and that nobody knew I really thought that. What made you say that? Paranoia, um, because they, I mean, you've signed a $17 million contract that you're not going to leak anything. But it was, um, it was just so intense and so stressful. And you become <laughs> just so unsure of yourself, you know? And uh, I don't know, it was just, you know, you can't, you can't talk to anybody about it. So I couldn't talk to Anya about it and it's just the way that you and sorry i should say this when i after i'd filmed the show i didn't think that was going to happen when i started watching the show i was like oh shit maybe i didn't win because of how bad they were making me look <laughs> so um just you know a little tidbit there <laughs> people want to know from hearing what you just said what were the challenges that we didn't see you win um, I honestly don't even remember what challenges we had on the show. Yeah, no. Um, like which ones did they show me when? They only show that the one in Italy, right? The Gladiator. That's the one I can remember, guys. If you remember something else, let us know down in the chat. Uh, I know I won another one where Seven Up was involved. I don't know. I have to go back and watch it. <laughs> so sad. I'm so. No, you're okay. You're fine. You're doing a great <laughs> job, girl. You're doing. Amazing. Like, because it was, um, it, there were weeks where, like, when you win a challenge, they make you kind of look good that week. And I was like, okay, like, this week, it's about to air. I know I'm going to look good because I won this challenge. And then they didn't show that I won it. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my anxiety was, like, so crazy. Just watching it, like, watching it air. I'm like, oh, yeah, I do kind of look like a mm -hmm. I do kind of look. You know, I don't disagree with you. Uh, but when you're filming it and you're just yourself, um, you don't, you know, feel that way or see it that way. And then, you know, editing is interesting and also just kind of the craziness that is reality TV. Mm-hmm. Got you. Everyone in the chat, just so that I'm letting y'all know I'm aware, they're saying that Anya was the one who won the 7-Up Challenge. I also won. The 7-Up Challenge. That, so that was the 17 Magazine carpet, right? 
Is that what that was? I can't remember. Guys, tell me on the chat. My mind is fuzzy. Tell us what the challenge was. I think it was the 17 Magazine green carpet. And then... so once everyone said, we got a right, we got a yes, we got a yes. <laughs> we got a yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I also won that. And that that was the the episode specifically that I was like, oh, I won the challenge this week. I'm gonna look so good, and then they didn't show it, <laughs> and I looked so bad. I, that week was I looked terrible that week, um, just like really disingenuous, and it just was so negative. And I was so excited to watch it. Like this is gonna be one where I actually look good, <laughs> and then I just it was bad. So I was like, oh, okay, so that's the thing. So apparently it's. They can just do that. <laughs> yeah. So did you, did you also shoot, got, when I won, she shot like a photo shoot with it too, right? There, yeah. So it, I want to say it was Anya, me, and maybe somebody else. I don't remember. Anyways, I was there. I also shot, but they don't show it. They don't show it at all. Yeah. Whitney, you also shot an ad too? Yeah. For seven up. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then wasn't there some money associated with that win too? There was, yeah. 10,000, did you get it? No, no. I And you know what, I have to think about, I, have, I honestly don't remember what happened. If it was like a, like a choice of mine or if it was a, like if I was like the runner up or something, I don't, I don't remember. I have to watch it again. I got you. I got you. I'll follow. Okay. But I was Thank there. I shot. <laughs> Those are the facts that Ms. Whitney is presenting to the classroom. God, she was there and she shot and we did not see it. It was edited out. Um, next. Too, but uh, yeah, I have to watch What'd it. What'd you say? I said there was another one too, but I've, it's been like three years since I've watched the show. Mm-hmm. I'm a little rusty, but that's okay. it's fine. You know, it is what it is. I won, so that's the important part, but mm -hmm. it's just frustrating because then, because you guys at home see it and you're like, oh, this bitch didn't do anything. She never won anything. She wasn't good. All her pictures were bad. And on my side, you know, coming into watching the show, I'm like, oh, I did really well. <laughs> like everyone's going to be on my side. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, they're not actually because... That's not how you look on TV now. It's just interesting. No, that is very interesting. Um, thank you for sharing for sharing that with us. Thank you. Next on the list is Fatima. <laughs> oh. Um, God, night and day. Night and day. She when she went on the show, she was a nightmare. Just really oh my God. I think she wanted to be the drama girl i think that's what she wanted i think she didn't think she was gonna get very far you know what i mean because she in the very first episode she's like fighting someone <laughs> do you remember this mm -hmm. like muhammad ali's like granddaughter or something it was the very first like schools in session okay okay yes she yes orange hair and to win and so she was kind of like going for that angle mm -hmm. and I I don't think honestly I don't even think until like like through the entire show I don't think she got like how beautiful she is mm -hmm. I really don't and I think since then um, we actually used to live on the same street mm. <laughs> in New York since then she's come into her own and she's so successful and beautiful and I mean like as a person not just um her looks uh but on the show she was a completely different human being just mm -hmm. very, um uh, venomous gotcha how was the cover girl shoot I love your photo oh <laughs> thanks uh that was the closest we got to the coliseum so <laughs> that's cool Mm -hmm. <laughs> um it was cold 
I mean, it's, um, that's mostly what I remember. It was just really cold, mm -hmm. you know, and, but that was the first shoot we did. I think that we didn't have like meat underwear or I don't know, like <laughs> live animal. It was just like <laughs> all the stuff they throw at you. It's like, oh, and here you get to just like stand here and look pretty. And there's no other anything that's in your way. So if you mess this up, we have a really big problem. Right. I was like, I can do that. I can stand here. <laughs> I can look in the light and smile. Uh -huh. <laughs> this one I've got. <laughs> Next on the list is Anya. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, Hawaii. I think she's back in Hawaii. I Yeah, I haven't heard from her in a very long time. She just got married, I think, to to um her female partner. I believe she's married now. What's her Instagram handle? Um, it's something weird. I'll God send it to me or DM it to uh, Whitney, and I'll DM it to her. It's something weird, like pop or something. I don't. I can't. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, so, Anya and I on the show, we were best friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and even after the show, I flew to Hawaii before it aired that I had won. Mm -hmm. like the only other person in the world who I could talk to about it. And, um, and it was great. You know, we were super close and everything was wonderful. And then the show aired and the way that it made it look was just really negative for both of us. Like we were against each other and we were literally when the judges were deliberating in Rome, the two of us were in the back. Like, I hope you win. No, you're going to win. Like, no, no, I hope you do. Like you worked you know, like the two of us are both like championing each other. Um, and so it's just interesting, you know, when you see it on TV, you're like, oh, like, you don't see that at all. But we mm -hmm. were besties by the end of it. And then yeah, you see them, you know, say bad things about you on TV. And you're like, oh, okay, maybe we weren't friends. And so that kind of put a damper on our relationship for a couple years. And then um, we reconnected in New York and um, we're fast friends again there. Had some good times. <laughs> and, uh, and then I don't really know. We just kind of like dropped off. Gotcha. But well, I'll send... She's amazing. She's gorgeous, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll send you her um, Instagram. We put it down here for me. I remember it now. <laughs> um, Considering what you remember from the final runway, do you feel like you fairly whooped her ass? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do feel that way. <laughs> you know, so it's, <laughs> I feel like I'm ruining the show. <laughs> like, I see these comments like, oh, well, this is different. This is different. Like, this, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't, like, just la, 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 you don't have to hear it. <laughs> That's okay. You can pretend like I didn't say it, but this mm -hmm. is, so the runway <laughs> Let me also ruin for you. Uh, we walk several times when we do the runway, the final runway. Yeah, you walk about 13 times in each dress. Yeah. So if a girl stumbles or she looks, you know, like she falls or whatever, that's one out of so many <laughs> different walks that she took. So it's, um, again, you see it, you see the 10 seconds, you're like, oh my God, it's so intense. There's all this pressure. Um, and it's not really like that, you know, you've got like, lines and lines of people and you just kind of go around and around and around and then they put on tv whatever they want <laughs> but i did feel like um just uh, generally i had a pretty strong walk and uh since the first day anya had to work on her walk so mm -hmm. i just had like a slight advantage with the walk and no go ahead well that versace dress <laughs> Um, it had my pink and purple one. It had like all these ruffles in the back and it kept getting caught on my shoe. Mm -hmm. And like, um, it, it was just, uh, my anxiety was very high. I should say, I think I actually put a hole in it by the time it was done. And they were like, this is like a hundred thousand dollar dress. Like that might be your whole contract. <laughs> yeah. So, oops. What's going on y'all? Hope y'all are enjoying, but we gotta interrupt this right fast for a word from our sponsors.
Sorry, Ryan. Um, so it was the runway in your final speech that you believe gave you the final over Anya into the finishing number one spot. Yeah, I think so. Bam. <laughs> um, next on the list is Mr. J. Manuel. Let me close my blinds. I'm listening to you about to close my blinds. <laughs> <laughs> um, J. Ken. <laughs> Like Barbie's Ken, he's just perfectly in place, like all the time. Mm -hmm. Everything is not a hair out of sorts. Like he's just mm -hmm. perfect. How was it working with him? Um, he's not like the uh, warmest person on set, so that's why it's like he's kind of like the Ken doll. Like you don't get that warm vibe that you get with Nigel or Miss J. Um, he just is kind of standoffish. But um, he definitely has, you know, vision. And uh, you either get it or you don't, <laughs> pretty much. Mm -hmm. How was, um, how was Paulina Porskova? Oh, my God. I thought that she liked me. <laughs> because, you know, when we went to Elite, she was there. And I um, was, like, the, the girl that day that I think was her favorite or so I don't remember but she was like you you like you've got a great look or some shit like that and so I thought like this is my first meeting with her she likes me she likes my look you know whatever and you know we never really had another conversation because she was a judge so it's not like you see her anywhere other than panel and you don't talk in panel and um yeah I I thought that she I thought she liked me and then I watched the show and was like oh my god <laughs> She's so mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, um, I think she called me a ham. So I wish I had known that before I promoted her book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. But uh, yeah, I had no idea. So as far as I know, all of my work with her has all been very positive. She's always been very nice to me to my face. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Oh, what are your thoughts on Miss J Alexander? Oh, God, I love Miss J. I actually have, um, when I won, she ripped the, um, the sequin name tag off of her chest and gave it to me. And she was like, bitch, I never give nobody nothing. Like you better frame this. And I do have it framed <laughs> still. She's amazing. Just like can a sneak up. Are we able to sneak a peek at it? Oh, no, I have to, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Leave this room and go, and there's like dogs and stuff, so. But I can okay, say. Fair enough. <laughs> a picture, that's dope, no, a picture is dope enough, that's good. Um, what are your thoughts on Nigel Barker? Oh, he's amazing, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. And he, um, honestly, he was a champion for the plus size model industry. Oh. For sure. Um, when I won, like, specifically, I felt like he was maybe the most excited like, of all the judges. Mm -hmm. He's really, you know, passionate about that. So that was just really cool because he's worked with so many different people and done so much. And so, like, when somebody who's big like that gives you the approval, it's like, that's just, you know, it feels really great. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, both, we shot Seventeen magazine with him in Italy, and we were both like, "Oh my god, <laughs> Nigel!" But again, you haven't been around a man in several months, so like, it's all mm -hmm. it's excited. All, it's like, <laughs> yeah, a little over the top. <laughs> Last but not least, Tyra Lynn Banks. Um. Supermodel. I mean, she's this ethereal presence. I, I think that on the previous seasons, she got close with the girls um, and they had a lot more contact with her. And I think that, you know, at the end of every season, there's only one winner. So you got 12 pissed off girls who don't like you. <laughs> and, um, and I think it was bad press for her. And I think it, it hurt her. 
So by the time cycle 10 came around, she really had no contact with us. Like if she had to go to the bathroom, we'd have to go like out the hall around the corner. They'd like lock us in the stairwell just for her to walk down the hall. So there was no interaction, like I said. And even when I um, co-hosted her shows with her, nothing like different dressing rooms, no like hi, like nothing, no conversation unless we were on stage. Um, and I don't, I don't think she's mean or anything. Like when I, uh, I won <laughs> so long ago, um, MSNBC's like most influential women in the world, like top 12, some shit like that. And she sent me flowers, like a huge bouquet of flowers and a handwritten card. Um, and it was just like, it was so kind and unexpected because she obviously didn't have to do that, mm -hmm. but just, just very little contact you know, we're, we're basically, I don't think she wants anyone to say bad things about her anymore, which I don't blame her, you know. Gotcha. So, so you don't take it personal? No, no. Um, and it also keeping us all at an arm's length. Like I said, she's still like this. She's a supermodel to me. It's like, I've worked with the supermodels. I've worked with like really big people mm -hmm. and Tyra is still the one person that I would get around and be like, oh my God, it's Tyra. Like I shot a commercial with Rihanna. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And mm -hmm. uh, like, I know nothing. <laughs> Just she is, she's an idol to me. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, fair. Fair. I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited at your perspective because you did echo like what many people say about her when they're trying to talk about her in a negative like you know she wasn't really reachable she wasn't really any of that but you take it more as under like understanding like maybe she didn't want to invite all that type of energy around her and she exposed herself to negative opinions about herself like that maybe you know maybe that was her trying to put up barriers your yeah. perspective intrigues me only one girl wins so you got 12 mm -hmm. And everybody always blames Tyra for who wins. Mm -hmm. Like, there are other producers with just as much power as Tyra on the show. So <laughs> it's not just her, but she gets all the negativity from it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. position. Like, there's no way I'd put myself out there like that. Makes sense. Um, here are we with some fan questions. We're going to zip through these. Um, the first one is from Josephine underscores. Thank you so much for roll call, though. That was an amazing roll call. You did fabulous. Like, you did freaking amazing. So sorry. Just want to make sure you know that. You did amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I said thank you. No, you're welcome. Josephine underscores Salas05. There is a rumor on the internet that production told her to gain weight prior to filming the show. Is this true? No, that's not true. But they did tell me I had to be a size six on the show. So oh, wow. when I had the audition, there's actually several months between auditions. So I had the audition in Orlando um, that they had, like, I didn't have to wait in line or whatever because that was my hookup. <clears throat> and after that audition, it was like two and a half months before I got a call <laughs> you know about like from the show at all so I didn't even think I got anything but they did make it clear like if you're if you're going on the show like you are a size six you cannot be thinner than that so you know I don't know if that's like I don't know what that means <laughs> I mean it's standard if you're a model people do tell you what size you are but they weren't like gain weight like I was already a size six I think they were like don't lose weight sort of thing got you got you Okay. Um, I'm skipping around some of these questions because you've answered some of them just in talking, so I don't want to ask you something repetitive. Um, here we go. This is from Vanity underscore Prime. It's saying, hi, Whitney. Why were you kicking along with Allison when she made that comment to Fatima about her taking her from the back because she's Black? That was a big moment. <laughs> That's what I was talking about when we were talking about Allison. It was like that one thing she did, not okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to understand that <laughs> I'm talking about the time I knew her before that. Mm -hmm. Before that, obviously, I didn't realize she would say something, you know, racist or um, that offensive. 
when mm -hmm. we were out, it was like, oh, this girl's a bitch and this show sucks. And like, I'm, you know, I want to go get a martini. Like she was just this really dry, um, different sort of character. I'm definitely not championing Allison because after I saw that, I was like, oh shit, that is not okay. But mm -hmm. when they are living, like we don't see everything that everybody else does. And I remember when that happened and it was like, oh no, we're not, we can't do that. <laughs> so that was a good time for her to leave, <laughs> for sure. Th that moment became something bigger behind the scenes? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like, like yeah, she wasn't kicked off because of it, I would say, but it definitely shifted, I think, the entire dynamic of the house. Because before, you know, Fatima really tried to start shit with everybody. And I mean, like, everybody. She would blatantly say really rude. You know, like, Allison had anorexia. And she was like, don't eat that. You're going to get fat. Like, she, Fatima would say fucked up shit. And, um, and blatantly trying to start fights. Um, but, yeah, then Allison took it to just a totally inappropriate place. And, um, and I think it just shocked everybody like just that's <laughs> there's a line and that's and now it's behind you <laughs> gotcha yeah gotcha. um Koki say cozy is saying hi whitney was there anything we didn't we didn't see on tv with the fight between you lauren and claire against dominique another big big question for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's definitely things you didn't see in that fight <laughs> Um, yeah, I got pretty nasty that fight. I'm even like I have trouble separating what they showed on TV and what actually happened in real life because like obviously I have m real memories and then you see the show and you you know you kind of implant those in your head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you forget things. Um, but yeah, there. I don't really want to go into detail, <laughs> but yeah, there were some really bad things said um, and it got very aggressive. I mean, Lauren has a very aggressive nature um, and had been in a lot of fights and um, was kind of violent in that way. And so when things started happening with Dominique, uh, that was kind of Lauren's first like go-to was like, you know, physical sort of um, answers to that. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then I'm just, you know, um, more talkative and so definitely <laughs> it definitely was a, it was a big it was a big shit show oh but i do want to say this <laughs> when um dominique called me racist my response was very 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 mean but it was not my best friend is black so when I saw that on TV, I was like, oh my God, like what a stereotype that is right there. So they cut that because um, what I did say was actually like super messed up. I was just really mean to her, but I had nothing. Uh, that was not my response. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's unpack this. So, let's like, <laughs> hey, really hard. boom, 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 boom. Um, you know, you know, Whitney, that was a big question. You, so you're saying that the response of you saying that my friend was black was not said in that context. Do you remember the context it was said in? I'm sure it was it was after that at some point, like because I, at that point, like you've called somebody racist, like then I said whatever, and then the you know that dialogue would continue. So like, dude, like my best friend is black, like whatever. But my initial response was not like you're racist. My best friend is black. Like that's not that's not how it works <laughs> so um yeah I got a lot of shit from my family about that I was like that's not what I said initially I mean I did she is but it that was not my like defense of, like I'm not racist because I know black people like that's not <laughs> you know just like okay. stereotypical no I'm with you so I want to know what does Whitney say officially to that to that um, question about you on the show because it was a question I was going to ask you. We, we kind of jumped ahead, but what do you say to people who take that moment and contribute to this idea that you were some sort of racist or had racist feelings? What What do you say about that? Um, 
I mean, I, I don't. I, I've always just kind of thought that actions speak louder than words. Okay. Um, and I just feel like it would be such a stereotype to be like, I don't know, this, this Southern girl, you know, who's like trying to defend herself by uh, telling you, you know, how not racist they are. Like, that's just, I just don't think that's how life works. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, I think actions speak louder. So it's not, you know, I don't know. Does that make sense? It's just like a weird- No, that makes sense. You you rather not even acknowledge it because for you, it's not a truth. So it's not something that you really want to acknowledge. Yeah. Like, I, I don't feel like I have to tell you why I'm not racist. You know what I mean? Like, I just mm -hmm. think it's not. And, you know, just- um, And you feel like acknowledging it will only just make it worse because it's like a, a circular yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like so many things. I just all, mm -hmm. you know, I'm also like, you see people who, because <laughs> I have, I have, you know, friends on Facebook or wherever, and they say mm -hmm. inappropriate things, and they're like, oh, well, I'm not racist. I blah, blah, blah. And I da da da. da. And you're like, oh, you're definitely racist. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> if you feel like you have to defend yourself, then you probably are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've never felt that way. I have explained to people before, um, like if they br bring up the fight with Dominique, like what really happened. But, um, you know, that's like a more personal level, I feel like. Okay, that's fair, fair. Thank you, thank you for sharing what you did share. Thank you, I, I really do appreciate your perspective and your stance on it, you sharing it. Um, here we go, this is from Julio D. Quintero. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing, I won't lie. Oh, I'm sorry, they asked about the dominant situation. Um, you already said what you need to say on that. I'm sorry. This is from Kimmy, Kimmy Rowe. The recap episode of this season is so iconic. Between Marvita walking around naked and Claire constantly breast pumping milk, are there any other answers you remember from the house? Um, sorry, any other what that I remember? Antics, like what things that people did. Oh, God. Um... <laughs> Um, so Marvita and Katja Jenna slept in the same bed together and it was like a little twin bed and Marvita was naked. I don't know. That was kind of like a, an interesting, like just piece of the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, <and> then... <laughs> um, God, Dominique used to do something too. I can't remember what it was, but I know that it came out while she was doing it. She talked about how her vagina has a butterfly tattoo. Like it is tattooed like a butterfly. And I remember that because the cameraman, you know, is sit like next to me filming and I was here. And so he like turns like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, shit, I can't remember what she did though. But a lot of the girls were naked, honestly, also. Uh, trying to be on that. I don't know. I don't know. I no. do. Know when we were in Italy, though, we could not, for the life of us, figure out how to work anything in the kitchen. Like we had to make everything on a panini press because no one would tell us how it worked. And um, there's no heater in the pool, also. So it was just like this really miserable, like <laughs> lush Roman pad that no one could access. No one could do anything <laughs> yeah. in no no stove like we couldn't we couldn't turn it on like it was just yeah it was just uh it was rough <laughs> vanity underscore prime is asking why was that lady from the parent trap vendela coming for you during the challenge and panel what was her vendetta, vendetta against you many questions about that um was she from the parent trap <laughs> i don't know they just put it down and i just read the, the question as written girl <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. She really did not like me. I don't know. It's, um, I think that sometimes, especially on this show, like, or actually dealing with straight size models altogether, there's a lot of, um, like tension and backlash because 
straight size models, especially if you're someone like Vendela who's been in the industry for like 20 some odd years, um, have to be so careful about what they eat and have had to be, you know, a size zero for their whole life. And um, I'm sure that they have a lot of like anger and resentment for that. And I think that being around a plus size model who's like, oh yeah, like I can, I'm allowed to eat. Um, and also model, I think that there's some like, um, yeah. Projection. Yeah, and resentment, like it's, you know, where was that 30 years ago when she was modeling, you know? <laughs> or That's a nice way to look at her. <laughs> I That's a fair way to look at her. Maybe she just didn't like me. Maybe she just thought I was a bitch. <laughs> but I did do a split though, like that, was a that was like a that was work for me that post <laughs> like you know to just you know whatever like, i did i did that in jeans that was hard you did you did, I did. She's like you know, like i was you know she made it seem like i wasn't being serious but like you're with all these vogers and they're like wild and they do all these crazy things like i was just trying to you know have like a 10 the energy that they had and she's like, you weren't taking it seriously. You're like, I, I, I thought I was. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Um, do you feel like they picked your, photo, your best photo each and every time? This is Beck underscore, underscore Wolo. No. No, definitely not. I mean, and you feel like this was because? Well, it's, I, I don't feel like they didn't pick my best photo every time. Like, I'm a victim in some way. Like, I just don't think across the board that that they pick your best photo every time, regardless. I think there's girls in the house that are probably not that interesting or um, not doing enough on the show. And maybe the producers put up a photo that's not that good. And that sort of helps them on their way out. Um, that's a theory, by the way, that <laughs> it's not proven. But watching the show, it's like, like I said, there's no way you have some photos of girls that like their eyes are closed. Like you took 10,000 photos. And that mm -hmm. was the best one that you found. Like, I don't, right. don't buy that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess that's my two cents on it. I, I don't believe that they put your best photo up. Fair enough, thank you. Um, this is Kimmy Rowe asking about one of the biggest things that happened on the cycle, Fatima and her travel documentation. They wanna know, what do you think of Fatima's travel documentation drama? Do you feel like it was staged? <laughs> Oh, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let me tell you why. Because when you go on the show, you are required to have all of these things and you have to submit them. Like in order to just make it to the audition, you have to submit all of this stuff. So for her to miraculously not have it and be the only girl who somehow got on the show without it just seems really, really too coincidental to not be made drama. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> I mean, so, I had my passport to go on the show. Like, I didn't have one before I went on. That was a required document just to audition in a uh, in LA. Not the initial audition, the second one. Mm hmm. So yeah, she was at that audition too. <laughs> So what, what were the conversations like in the house when that happened, when she was able to continue and Stacey Ann wasn't? Like, did y'all ask her, like, girl, what's going on? Because I would have asked her. <laughs> I would have. Mike and all. She, <laughs> she oof. so Fatima had two kind of personalities on the show. And like I said, I, I don't think she's this way now. I think she's secure and... Um, just an incredible woman now. Mm -hmm. I think on the show, she was a different person. And so she had two sides when we were shooting. And that was um, pugnacious, wanting to fight everybody um, about everything and be really insulting, or mm -hmm. it was the victim. And there was a lot of that as well. Um, which I don't want to trivialize like anything that she went through, but it's just, it was a very clear, like, I'm either going to fight you or like, here I am crying because, um, you know, I don't know, because she lived in Boston and she moved to New York and she hates it. Like, I, it was just like, there was something that was like, oh God, it was tears and devastation or fighting. And so, yeah, the passport thing was very much like, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay.
I mean, there's a, you, how do you have a conversation with somebody like that? It's just, mm -hmm. it's like, honestly, I, I would say, like, maybe 15% of what came out of her mouth, I think, was actually true. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. And I was not the only one who felt that way on the show. Yikes. Yikes. And I don't think she's that way now. I think she's, like, really grown up and, like, has it together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was a while ago. Yeah, a while ago. This is from um, Fredero90. Did any of the Eliminator models prior to going overseas went to Italy as well? I know that's a very confusing question. Basically, basically they want to know, did any of the girls who were eliminated before y'all went to Italy, did they go with y'all as decoys <laughs> or stand-ins to um, Italy with you guys? No. Um, no. Mm -hmm. No. But the girls who are were eliminated in Italy, they stay there. They actually all walked in the final runway show. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I figure. I figure. Yeah. Oh. Um. Okay. You asked. You talked about your prizes early on in the chat, you guys. If you're just getting in here, this will be uploaded to YouTube. You can watch from the beginning. Um. This is from Vin. We're just gonna say Vin. Great question. They want to know what has been the most difficult reaction you've received about your win. Your win. What you consider the the um the most difficult reaction to you winning? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, you know, it, that that's hard to say because you don't realize like the show is in over a hundred countries. Mm -hmm. A lot of reactions <laughs> from a lot of different people. Um, I will say that the hardest thing for me was um, after the show aired, you know, it's, it's like, you think you're the, you're the champion in your own life, right? Like if you're gonna write a book about yourself, you'd be like, I woke up today and Oliver did a great job. We didn't, you know, mm -hmm. we're so happy and everything's wonderful. Well, that's how you see yourself. And so you go on the show and I'm like, I did this and I, you know, I'm the first plus size model and, um, I made friends with all these people and I, you know, you just feel like it's so positive and everybody's on your side because why wouldn't they be? This is your story. Uh, and then you realize that everyone is not on your side. And there was so much um, fat shaming. Um, there were, there were whole pages, I'm not sure that there still are, like whole websites just dedicated to hating me. And I never considered that to even be an option. And so, you know, initially I'm like, I'm reading everything, I'm reading all the comments, um, and people are just really, really mean. And that was that was hard for me. Um, Cause like I said, you don't, you don't realize that. You think like, everyone's gonna be on my side. They're all gonna be rooting for me. And then you got people who are like, oh, she's, you know, a fat bitch and Anya should have won. And I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right sure you know what do you what do you want me to say like mm -hmm. i'm a judge i didn't pick myself to win i'm not mad about it but like it's not my fault that i won you know what i mean but like people come at me like you shouldn't have won like okay well talk to the judges <laughs> then right right email the network it's not don't come for me about it because i have nothing to do with it so I do feel like it has definitely gotten to a place where people at home think their opinion matters <laughs> and they have to let you know. Um, and I mean, it is going to happen being a part of being a part of media that people consume as entertainment, but it, it does, it does get to a point to where it's like, yeah, you don't like yourself or this is very like, this is a lot. And I can, I can only imagine you being the winner of, a big show at that time, Top Model, the volume that you probably were receiving it at probably was a lot. Yeah, and people like would message my mom, like they go on my private Facebook page and it's like, you're a fat, ugly cow. And you know, I'm older now, like I've been through it. <laughs> I expect it now, but then I didn't. And so, um, I was like self-esteem wise, especially coming off like this show, like I'm supposed to be like, you know, I'm getting all this, this fan mail from people from all over the world. Like I wore a bikini to the beach today because of you, like, you know, just all these really positive things. And it didn't matter because my self-esteem was so low from constantly being um, like torn down from people. Mm -hmm. 
So it's, you know, like I said, like you still fake it and you get through, but um, especially coming off of that and having all this like body positivity, you know, like I'm, I feel beautiful because of you. And there I am feeling like ashamed of myself because, you know, 400,000 people <laughs> think that I'm like the worst winner, you know, or whatever. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. <laughs> so it's, um, it was definitely a, a difficult learning experience. How were you able to grow past that? Um, you know, I've, um, as I've gotten older, I, I try to see things from different perspectives and kind of play devil's advocate. Um, one time I had someone comment on my page, my private page, and they said something like, you're, you know, fat, fat, ugly bitch. Like you never should have won, um, you know, Anya should have won or Fatima or whatever. And it was just, it was scathing. It was nasty. And it really pissed me off. And I was like, this is my private page. My mom can see this, you know, and that it, it's not just me that it affects. It's your mom. It's your grandma. It's your sister. You know, like other people are seeing this too. And so I went on his page, like ready to like say some shit. Like, I'm, mm -hmm, here I come. <laughs> and I click on it and he's like this, um, like 13 year old Korean kid with cystic acne and I'm like, oh, my God, like, this boy is obviously hurting. You know what I mean? Like, hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. I think when I saw that, it made me kind of like, you know, maybe it's not just about me. Like, you know, maybe I, I shouldn't put as much thought and care into it because, like, other people are dealing with things. And it mm -hmm. might feel better to tear me down, you know, but it's mm -hmm. so what? You know, th this is a kid. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything to him. Like, you know, I'll delete the post from my page, but there's just bigger things in the world to deal with um, than my ego. <laughs> gotcha. No, everything you said sounds extremely healthy to me. Sounds extremely healthy to me. A very healthy way to disempower those type of, um, that type of energy coming your way. Um, here we go. We're almost done. We're almost done. You talked about your time at Elite, at Elite Model Management. Um, you talked about moments that we did not see. You talked about your edit on the show. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about on how you were portrayed on the show? How you were edited? Moments that maybe we didn't see? Moments that were probably misplaced that you feel like contributed to not being painted the best way? That's the whole show. <laughs> 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 Yikes. I will say it's funny though, um, because when I watch other reality TV shows now, I get this way more. Like there's a lot of times where like let's say Anya says something and um or like she you know, like she fell off the bus or whatever, and it then it shoots to my face and I'm like, ha, ha, ha you know, whatever. But that face is actually not from like even that day. Like they'll pull things from a completely different time. And mm -hmm. action in, like, you know, someone will say like, oh, um, you know, I'm sorry, Nigel, I thought I had a good shoot this week. And then it'll like flip to some girl and she's like, oh. but like she was rolling her eyes at something completely different, you know, a month ago. And they just mm -hmm. it out and put it in there to make you think that she's, you know, serving drama to this poor girl who's getting ripped. Mm -hmm. to she does. So um, that's definitely something I find interesting because I watch, you know, I watch reality TV and I'm like, oh yeah, I bet she didn't even do that. Like I bet this girl's mm -hmm. yeah. And now everyone thinks that she hates her because of this one reaction. Because of that edit. Yeah, yeah, but it's. I mean, <laughs> no one wants to watch real reality TV because it would just be boring. Right. So I want to know with you having the feelings about the show that you've expressed during this chat, how were you able to reconcile going back? still filming like you popped up on some cycles you were there for cycle 22 you still went into the entire show as a host how are you still able to come around this entity and be around them, those people that had like done done these things to your experience your first experience um you know the older you get the more trivial it seems like like when i was on the show initially it was the end of the world everything was just do or die um, mm -hmm. and then I got to, I guess, guest appear on the next season and it was like, oh, okay. Like I was still really nervous, but 
you know, you kind of have this different platform and then you start doing the TV shows and, you know, after the initial like uh, <laughs> difficulties dealing with reality TV and um, any kind of fame, like mm -hmm. it just all kind of dissipates. Like you just don't care quite as much. You're not quite mm -hmm. as worried, you know? Like, I'm sure you feel the same thing. Like, you're a celebrity. I'm sure you understand. Like, when you first posted your videos, I'm sure people said mean things. And you were like, bitch, what? <laughs> like, you know, and then you and you keep going. And then finally, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, sure. I don't care what you think. Like, I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm. But it takes time. I mean, I yeah. see, did you have a similar journey? You know what? Whitney, to be quite honest from you, since day one, Anything that I've ever done in media, I've done it because it makes me happy. You know, I'm really like my biggest fan as well as my biggest critique, my biggest critic. I so there that. are moments where like I'm reading myself down, but there are moments where like I'm serving the look or I'm doing the things. I'd be like, bitch, you gotta go, bitch, you better eat them up. And so for me, whether I get a thousand views, one million views, ten views, the fact that I did it and I liked it, that's enough for me. Yeah. So no matter what nobody ever says, it like it really doesn't it doesn't bother me because it's like, bitch, you're miserable. Because <laughs> I'm popping. I, I wish I had had that perspective in the beginning, but yeah, it's um good for you. Yeah, it's you know it's a lesson you have to learn, for yeah. sure. Yeah, God is still good. I'm still beautiful, and I still have a fat ass. So <laughs> I win at the end of the day. <laughs> and I'm not going nowhere. So, so get used to me. <laughs> you never does that. <laughs> <All that. laughs> um okay um i want to know whitney about something now this is me just fanning out because you were on top model not any shame at all but you were on top model when i was young so i was like really invested in all y'all and i remember like you had to like a dating show not a dating show but you had to like a dating website you were doing something like with like lingerie i want to say like you were doing like a lot of um businesses Tell us, like, what, what happened to you after Top Model? What were some of the things you got into? What you doing now? Plug, 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 plug. Uh, <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I won Top Model. That was good. And um, <laughs> I feel like a lot of girls win the show, and then they're like, okay, cool, check. I did it. And then they go home, you know, and then they do whatever they want to do. And I felt very compelled to continue modeling. Um and so, yeah, so I did for, uh, I don't know, like eight years, that's all I did was modeling. And I had, um, I was in New York, I was in LA, uh, I lived in London, and I had agencies all over the world, in Germany and South Africa. And I worked, I mean, literally um, on six continents. So um, I did a lot of traveling and a lot of modeling and made my money that way for a long time. And, um, and then I, I shot for Italian Vogue and I felt like, okay, <laughs> like I've had three billboards in Times Square. I've done Target. I've done Macy's. I was the first plus model for Forever 21. I've done Torrid. I've done Saks Fifth Avenue. I've done Walmart and Haynes and like just, you know, all, all these companies. Like there wasn't, there weren't a lot of people left for me to shoot with that I hadn't already shot with. I know that's right, Whitney. And, <laughs> and I was. I felt like, okay, you did Vogue and you've had this career and do you really want to be like in your thirties, like trying to go to castings, knocking on doors, you know, for a job that you're not even really that invested in anymore. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. you did it. Um, like, where do you go from there? You know what I mean? Um, and then I also started dating uh, a guy who I ended up marrying, but you know, I was traveling. So I was traveling every day day or two like when i lived in los angeles the longest i was ever in town was two weeks and that only happened one time in oh wow years. one time <laughs> it was like every day um so the industry the industry like opened itself up to you, you were working yeah yeah um and it was cool because i got to travel you know like i love traveling it was so neat to go to australia and greece and paris and like it was just amazing because like i said i didn't have a passport till i went on the show so mm -hmm. um so that really changed my life and uh, just you know opened my eyes to a much bigger world too um but then i was dating my husband and um and you know you travel alone 
and like all my photos were just selfies and this is like before the iPhone even had a selfie like camera mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like it's really sad like here I am at the Parthenon you be the only plus size winner that they have how do you view your stance your place in it all I first of all I can't believe that another plus size model hasn't won I just want to put that in there like it's been a yeah. long time. um I feel really really fortunate like it it definitely changed my life you know I was a college student when I went on the show and then I became a model making ridiculous money to stand in front of a camera and travel the world you know so it was like great it was great mm -hmm. and I'm I'm definitely it made me who I am it made me so much stronger like even with all the negativity that you get um I definitely became a stronger person because of it and I don't think I could run and operate a restaurant and all of the people that I do uh, manage every single day if I didn't have the experience that I have. So yeah, I'm really, I'm glad. <laughs> yes. If you were standing before Tyra Banks right now in this very moment, what would you say to her? <sighs> um, I would say thank you. Sincerely. Mm -hmm. She definitely changed my life. Dope. I also don't it's, like enough people say thank you to Tyra. I think people are really judgmental and difficult with her. She's she's just a human, you know, like the rest of us. So, uh, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to talk about while we spoke? I feel like you came bearing it all. I'm leaving satisfied. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm an open book. You know, you can always ask me pretty much anything. Um within reason <laughs> all right i'm definitely honest so for better or worse <laughs> no i don't think there's anything else thank you for inviting me thank you so much for accepting of this invitation i was geeked i knew they were going to be excited um i am honored to have shared these these two hours with you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. and thank you to everybody who's watching too I appreciate you guys, your time. Thank you. Thank you guys. Well, listen, if there's nothing else, everybody send Whitney kisses, hugs, healing energy, all the things, other things, as we wave goodbye to her for giving us an amazing chat on America's Next Top Model Cycle 10. Whitney, mwah! Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs>